YouTube, welcome back to another installment. Not, oh, no, not. Now, welcome back to Married at First Sight, our review for season 11. This week we're doing episode 7. We think. I might have to do a little dub because I forget. I think it's episode 7. Yes. This is the Visit House Moves In Week. Yeah. I still think it's corny that they live in the. Where the first site provides homes for them. That takes away some of the fun of finding a place. Um, but it is what it is. Oh, and Dr. Cal comes to visit. Everybody. Yes. The camera just got a little shaky. Sorry. Spasms. Spasms. I see how I don't. <laughs> if you are new to our channel and you are only watching our Merit at First Sight reviews, you don't know that um, Leon has a spinal cord injury. We're an interval couple. And so... That's what we mean by spasms. So go back to the very beginning. Start over. Get to know us. We hope you like us. Um. So this week's episode, like he said, is moving into the apartment, seeing each other's place. We're going to start with um, Brett and Olivia. That again, it was uh, it was weird. She uh, she kind of she wanted him to live in her spot. Yeah, so she wants him to, well, she, yeah, she wants, and when we say live at each other's spot, this is post-experiment, where they will live once everything's over. For the experiment, the show gets some housing, so they all live in the same, like, complex in their own, like, separate apartments. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, she likes her way of living. She likes where she stays at. She doesn't want to, like, she doesn't want to leave her routine. She doesn't want to leave her norm. She basically wanted, like, I want y'all to find me somebody that y'all, that I can just, like, place. Fits right in. Right, into this life that I've already built for myself. And I feel like this has kind of come up already in, like, okay. the routine that she has and how, like, that's already been established. Um, And so, her house really wasn't nothing, like, special. A lot of antiques. Yeah, well, because her parents own what an antique, antique store. Shop, yeah, yeah. So she like gets a lot of like secondhand rustic look type of things, kind of like a hodgepodge. Um, and she rents, and, and she rents, and so it's really which interesting. Which the hell is a problem? Yeah, so we kind of see this episode how their differences and how they um view money kind of like come to a head a little bit because he kind of looks down on the fact that she makes as much money as she does and still rents. But then, like, she goes to his place and she's very, like, basically, like, the reaction she had about his place is what we had about her place. It was like, this is just... She was not impressed, to say the least. But he, you can tell he was impressed by the fact that he worked hard for his own place. Mm -hmm. Something that he can call his own, that he's paying for. And it actually didn't look bad at all. Like, oh, but God, how? it looked yeah, but even for, like, a bachelor pad, it had a lot of potential. And it wasn't, like, super messy or anything. It was just under-decorated. I mean, that one spot where it was, like, around the corner. It was just this tool spot. Yeah. It was weird. And he had a divider so that you didn't have to necessarily see it. Yeah. Which was at least something. But as I said, it was, it's a guy house. Yeah. It's so just it very under-decorated. But then, like, Pastor Kyle comes to see them. And it gets a little tense. So that's when they had the conversation about the money and the traveling and stuff. Mm -hmm. So she she has this life that she's already established for herself and she wants to be able to travel mm -hmm. and do all of these things. And that's when you kind of notice that her making more money does kind of bother him because he's like, I'll stay home. Like, if that's what you want to do, you can go ahead and do it. And she's like, well, like, I would want somebody that can, like, go with me. And he's like, if you're paying, I'll go. He's like, if not, I'll stay home. He's like, you can go with your friends. And that kind of is, like, it just seemed very, like, such an immature. It kind of 
it speaks to how he responded to her in the last episode when his feelings were hurt. Yeah, instead that's of just his, communicating it, he kind of that's his mo. I mean, it was the way, like he said again with the house thing. It was trying to figure out, like she was like, she the location of the house is a nice house, and she's like, yeah, it's close to my job. He's like, it ain't close to mine. Yeah, he's like, well, we'll talk about that. Like, it's just, he doesn't really seem like he um, it's not warm, but he or doesn't. He doesn't have yeah, bedside manner like this is a hospital. He he doesn't seem to want to be flexible. Yeah, too. But she also doesn't either. I say. So it should be very interesting to see how these things. He definitely came sorry, at her. Talking about breaking like he, he can't. He definitely came at her neck a little bit when he was like, "She doesn't manage money well. She doesn't know what she's doing. She doesn't know how to budget." And she was like, yes, oh, I yeah, do. I just wanted Arthur, somebody yeah. like to help me. And he was like, you told me you don't know how to budget. You asked me for my help. Like, and he was like, I'm not digging into my retirement to like travel. And so it does. And again, it makes you wonder what, who they were for their interviews, who they were in their applications, what stuff they asked for and said that they would be okay with, because you have to wonder, like, did the show put them together for the drama? Mm-hmm which really isn't drama, it's just a conflict of interest, or did somebody ask for something different yeah. than what they actually got, or like, or were they too flexible, whatever they asked for, and now we're seeing how this could potentially be a problem. I'm starting to think that they're not going, I thought that they would make it, and they would just be a boring couple that you would forget about, but I'm starting to think that they may not make it, yeah. because I think that they're very similar in some aspects. Um... But I'm waiting for it to really come to a head. Like I feel like their yeah, their differences are starting to like definitely, and I feel mm-hmm. like she's biting her tongue a lot. And at some point, it's going to all come out because he definitely either he cares enough to really be hurt, or he doesn't care at all. Mm-hmm. Is the impression I get from him? Yeah, it's, I think it's going to be a big blowout. I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be something that comes very. I don't want to say toxic, but something that becomes very unhealthy if not mm-hmm. handled the right way. Yeah, I can so see I that. I can see something unhealthy happening with them. Yeah. Um, who should we do next? Since we're looking at them, Miles and Karen. Miles and Karen. I will say this about this episode. This was one of the first seasons in a while nobody like, looked for condoms or anything. That's true. I feel like we didn't have that on this nobody. episode. Like to be in each other's personal places. Yeah. Like nobody was looking for anything like, like girls and panties. Yeah, yeah. Like, not, not like it that. It wasn't. Yeah, I, that definitely did not happen, which is interesting. Um, Miles so and Karen. yeah, they seem to be. Sorry, they seem to be getting along a lot better. This episode, um, she does admit that she finds him attractive. Um. And he's waiting for her to open up more. Um, sorry. This, the flash is like, I'm trying to, yes, I'm trying to look at my notes and I'm seeing like spots. Um, I don't want to stop. Jesus. (laughs) Um, so they go to each other's places and but they both have a lot, lot of, of shoes. shoes. <laughs> yeah. I can't. I... Now, okay. So, I watched somebody else's reviews of this show. Leon does not. And I watched their reviews because I just, I like the content creators. Um, Something that they mentioned was when Karen goes to Miles' place and she makes the joke of like, let me see how clean it is in here. And she runs her finger across the counter. One person thought it was very, like, reminiscent of her being stuck on her age difference Mm -hmm. and almost like a motherly type of thing. And then I feel like somebody else has said something about the finger. I forget exactly what it was. But I actually, I brought that up because I felt like it was something that I paid no attention to. And I don't know if you... I saw it and I was like, that, but... It's going all I think for a while till she gets fully comfortable with him, I think it's gonna be a lot of the groups. Yeah. Because we yeah. like we're our age difference. We have an age difference, but it's never those type of jokes, but definitely other groups about age difference. So I think when she gets comfortable with him, the jokes might change, but it'll still be an age joke with her. Yeah. 
I do think that they like each other. I do yeah, think they, that, they, well, they. let me say, we, we know that he likes her. I do think that she likes him to a certain extent. I just think that she has a huge fear of opening up and really getting comfortable. And I think that um, although she signed up for the show, she can't move at the pace that this show probably would really allow for her to, yeah. for this really to like be super duper successful. I do have hopes that they still will make it. It's just a matter of how willing she is. Yeah. And how much patience he has. Yeah. So one of the things that comes up in their conversation with Pastor Kyle is he's extremely patient and he wants her to be happy and comfortable. Almost like that happy wife, happy life type of vibe. But the question is, is he asking for what he wants? And so she does talk about how is one of her apprehensions is to not know if she's like if like the full version, the real true version of wow. him because yeah, like I want she says like I want to know who Miles is when he has to work five days a week mm-hmm. and like how he is in his own environment when it's time to be back home because he's such a yes man. Mm-hmm. Um he doesn't really ask for any of the stuff that he wants because like they were at Pastor Kyle asked him about like physical touch and like he like alluded to like he'll come behind her and like kind of kiss her from behind and she doesn't really like it. And she didn't really say anything until it comes up in that conversation. Um, but like you can definitely tell he's physical touch is more of a love language yeah. for him. You can tell he wants to prove like show that he's attracted to her and she's just not quite there yet. But I don't think he'll push the envelope to like ask yeah. for more either. He's just very like subdued. So that could really be a bad thing, especially with his depression, his clinical depression. If he doesn't ever really, if he's just constantly like giving, giving and giving and giving and not receiving in any type of way. I don't think that she's um, opposed to it. I just think it's a matter of him not actually, I don't even know if he knows what he wants. Like, I think he knows he wants a relationship. But now you have to wonder, like, do you even know exactly what that means? Like, I think he likes the longevity of, like, marriage and, like, a committed relationship. But, like, I don't, I wonder if he knows exactly what he wants in, in yeah. yeah, in that day-to-day type of, um, you know, situation. So, yeah. Should be interesting. I don't think we had much else about them. I don't think so either. Yeah, so, um, Amani and Woody. Woody's over his grandma. Woody lives with his grandma. No, he got some But sequences. he lived with his grandma like they, like, best friend yeah. roommates. Not like a, I live with my grandma because yeah. I ain't got nowhere else to go and I can't yeah. afford to live. They literally live like she roommates. Know he got women. She lives there. Yeah. Um... <clears throat> I don't remember her place, Amani. I don't either. I know she don't like the hat wall that he has. The hat wall. Yes. Oh, um, because he has a lot of hats. She had. She has a lot of clothes. She was in her closet for hours. Oh I yeah, and she was pulling out the clothes and she he was like holding it on his arm. arm. He just was like, he's like, listen, I got to take a break. I got to take these to the car. I'll come in for the second match later. Um, yeah. That was pretty funny. But they just, they still they flowing. They just, yeah. Now, if the, when Pastor Kyle came, it was a little interesting. It was funny. Um, he was saying he doesn't like surprises in marriage. And she was like, he's like, you know, I was telling you about, like, don't just come home and cut your hair off. And Wait, but before we even get to that, so he, he says something about, like, Pastor Kyle asked him about how they're getting along or whatever, and I forget exactly what his response was. But it was one of his typical like Woody responses, and like, oh, yeah, Cal <laughs> kind of like called them out on like that smoothness, like, and she was like, "Yeah, he really smooth." So I, I think I like the fact that she kind of like knows it, knows it, yeah. But yeah, so they were talking about the surprises, and she says, "I forget like how she said it, but like." Cutting her hair off or like coming home with her hair cut. And he's like, you can't just come home with your hair cut. She's like, cause we together. He's like, you gotta let me know. She was like, I can cut my hair. He's like, no, you can't just show up. Like it was this one and went on. Yeah. Like his, but his, what? It's, it did sound controlled. Straight up, it sounded straight. Yeah, it sounded controlled. But his spin on it to make it sound better 
was he was like he just doesn't like being surprised. Um, I think he got a girl pregnant one time, mm -hmm. and she ended up having an abortion, and didn't tell him. So he felt like he just feels like now like anything in the relationship needs to be discussed, and like that's I guess his hangup. So yeah, he um, felt like she didn't give him the option to even support her. Yeah. Not to say that he was against yeah. the abortion, but the fact that, like, he was like, well, I would have at least wanted to be there and hold her hand. Yeah. And she didn't even give me that option. Now, that's all well and good, Woody. I'm not saying I don't understand where you're coming from, but I do think that the comparison of the two was a reach. She, like I tell, like we tell our toddler, I am the boss of my body. And I don't think and then his like argument to be like, well, what if I just quit my job? It's such a, and that's like not even one in the same, bruh. Like it ain't, and you shouldn't even be trying to make it that. But I'm glad that they seem to have a level of communication that they were able to talk it through. Now, what would have happened differently if Pastor Kyle was sitting right there? Yeah, I don't know if that would have been. I'm anything. curious, but I feel like she's not. But also, Pastor Kyle just was there. He also didn't interject either, so. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I still feel like it would have went differently if it was alone, but they yeah. did kind of seem to squash it on their own. I think I'm nervous that um, it's going to be a lot of work for her to have to be the one to pull these things out of him, to always be the stronger one to communicate in a more um, efficient way. Mm -hmm. um, but then it was also pretty funny that apparently he was trying to make a honeymoon baby. Bruh. Y'all only know Bogus. each other a week. Please don't. It was funny because the cop was like, Amani, say something. You you okay with this? Like, <laughs> uh, so not much ashamed about our thoughts on them. I think that they're still pretty... Uh, they're in a pretty good spot. They're in a good place. They're going to be all right. Um, Bennett and Amelia. She's 27, a doctor. And she got roommates up from behind. They live in this mansion. Um, Wait, but they move into the apartment. What? He said, "Wait." Now you skip them looking at their other apartments because they uh, moved in first. They move in first. You're right. They go. They at the apartment first, and then they and they were singing in the closet. <laughs> oh, because of that great acoustics. <laughs> I'm with it. And they They're separated weird. their bathrooms by, like. Are we just washing our hands or are we like doing the number two? <laughs> you can tell people who have never had two bathrooms in their life. I thought that was so funny and interesting it was cool. that that was how they decided how they, to. Well, I'm really curious if if they're the same way without the cameras. I hope they are. I think they are. But there's a possibility that they're just playing up with the cameras because they just be too in sync. They I just, don't think that they're playing it up for the cameras, but again, it could be like another mouse. Is it could be another mouse situation where it's somebody not acting for what they want. That, yeah, that, maybe that's what I feel. Yeah. Because they seem to be getting along extremely yeah. well, just so you have to wonder. -ish. Yeah, like, and I think the only thing that they have played up on to be an issue with them has been the whole residency I mean, and the moving thing. It is a big issue, but like, you don't ever see them kind of like disagree on anything yeah. and it's, it's not that for the sake of disagreeing it's just to make sure that everybody's truly really happy yeah. but they also come across as very like um laid back people that they like it's so much they probably like roll off their backs and they can appreciate each other's differences and not yeah. see it as a hindrance like which I guess is a good thing yeah so to speak so yeah, so then we go to Amelia's place and she lives in this like mansion and he's intimidated by the fact that she's like a doctor who lives in a mansion. But then you get there and it's like a frat house to me. Yeah, she lives in, she's living in the area. It's not even a room. It's not, it doesn't even it's have a door. It has a, some scarf or something. It's like what should be like a nook. What? Or like a library. She was prom queen. And Bennett is impressed by the fact that he's married to a prom queen. That's all we want to say about that. 
Um, yeah, I think I was definitely like, why is he impressed by this? Like, it looked like she lived because he. They gave all the way they built it up was as if like she was like extremely wealthy living. Not to say that she's not. She very well could be. But like I was definitely picturing something different. Like you think that she lives in this mansion with like help mm-hmm. and she's like I, I feel like it's coming out wrong. I was going to say like very well off but like that's still insulting because she could very well still be well off. It just could be a matter of like not. It's not. She's not showing it like everybody yeah, else would. Like, I, like Leon was like she 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 could still own it, and I was like, I wouldn't think that she would like own it and um not like take care of it better. To be like, if you own it, why are you living in this little nook that doesn't even have doors? Yeah. And her mattress was on the floor. I think that's just how she is. That's just her. I feel like she it it to me it came across very frat house. She's gonna have her child out the side. Not even in the tub in the bed in the house. She's gonna have a kid outside. You said out the side? Out the side. That's a million. And then we go to Bennett's place. That he built himself. Bennett got a tiny home. Bennett Bennett lives in a tiny home. Um that does not have a bathroom. Or he, kitchen. Or a kitchen. He has to go like across the yard or something. Which honestly, like, what's the weather like there? Do they does it ever get like snowy and cold? Like, I guess if it doesn't, yeah, I guess if that doesn't happen, then it's not like super terrible. You gotta go poop at three o'clock in the morning. What you doing? Okay. I mean, at least ain't got to put on snow boots and a coat. But for sure, I would not want to have to be going to somebody else's house to use the bathroom. Better look resourceful though. He probably got a whole system for that. That he ain't going. He just gonna take it with him when he go in the morning and dump it. All right. But she was super impressed with his. Um, literally, he built it by hand, tiny mm-hmm. home, and it actually wasn't. I mean, aside from not having the kitchen in the bathroom, it actually wasn't bad. The boy built the box. I mean, I mean, I don't know where they would live at. He built it, but he built the box. I don't know where they would live at when they got after this is over because. She in the little nook, and he's in the tiny home without his bathroom in the kitchen. Yeah. He, I mean, he might as well move wherever she's going. He ain't, I mean, really. Yeah, you got much to pack up? He so ain't got much up. to pack up. Mm-hmm. Um, but speaking of people who don't have much to pack up, Christina and Henry. I don't even remember Pastor Kyle coming to talk to them. Anyway, Christina and Henry. We go to go see their places. Henry's is pretty normal. Mm-hmm. He plays Xbox with his friends' kids. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was... Leon, as you can see, he's cracking up. But I feel like... I was like, well, at least... It, he would be like a normal person. To, at least it's not a random kid. Okay. I get it. I get it. But some things you just don't say all right. That just sounds creepy and weird. I get it. Like, you know who it is, but I can't see what's that kind of thing? Henry playing Call of Duty or Grand Theft Auto. Like, what game are you really playing? Minecraft with a kid? So, if we go to everybody's place and we see how everybody living, right? Then it's Christina's turn. And she straight up said, I just got some stuff in the car. You know I'm a flight attendant, so I'm not really in one place for so long. We don't have to go see my place. Sis sounded homeless. I don't care how many flights you take, and you have some place that you call home. So some of the like comments I've seen on the internet, not like in one particular place, was kind of like she lived with a dude. Just saying, that's why she wants to make a move and all like this, because somebody here. Yeah. Like, her stuff really was, like, in a van. Like, it's all right here, bro. We ain't got to go nowhere. Let's just go she head back bogus. to the apartment. They bogus. They both bogus. But the best part about this episode, let's get into this. They sit down with Pastor Kyle to talk about their relationship, their chemistry, how everything is going with them. And... You know, the, it comes up again that, like, she's open to him making the move whenever he's ready. He starts to get the little twitch thingy going. 
and the mic drop came in when Henry basically sounded like he friend zoned Christina. I forgot that for a minute. He basically says something. So Pastor Kyle asked him if he moves faster and has he moved faster in other relationships. And he said yes when there's an attraction there. So he was kind of like there's more of like a friendship vibe there for him. And I think, oh, he, I think he even says that she's impatient and high maintenance. And Pastor Kyle was like, yeah, you kind of did like. He kind of confirms that she's yeah. like a bit of a diva, but it, it definitely came across like he ain't feeling her and he just don't want to say it. Like yeah. he's too nice to say it. And maybe that's what the twitch is coming from. The pressure of, I can't be honest that I ain't feeling you, sis. Huh? It very well, very well could be. He's an uncomfortable situation. Like I think, which, <laughs> which is funny. Because I feel like she's very mean girl vibes. Like his friends. And maybe that's why they're all his friends. Maybe he like, y'all nice people or whatever. Like, it's cool. But like, I ain't trying to be married to them. Yeah, y'all. I thought that. But yeah, that was like. I forgot about that part. I was done. I was like, oh, so this whole time we thought he was like. This geeky dude who just didn't know how to like a girl and how to make a move. He's that awkward, like, <laughs> Like, we waiting for that drawing to happen. And no, he just like, we just here. I'm committed to this experiment, but I don't really like her like that. Next week shall be good. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So I think that's all we have for you guys for this episode. Hopefully our clothes look different in the next episode. Thank you guys for watching. Thank Don't you. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Bye-bye.